guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to get right into the meat and potatoes, where I'm finally going to be showing you guys everything that I use to run my business and the things that you need to start a t-shirt business and to maintain a t-shirt business. Now, this video is not gonna be very structured. Normally, I sit down here in this setting and I talk to you guys from my little notes and give you all the details like that, but we're just gonna kinda wing it today. I'm gonna take you in the field, the field being my craft room, and show you everything that you guys kinda need to know. I feel like it's kinda hard to sit through these sit down videos all the time, so we're gonna go and actually show it to you and hopefully that's a little bit more bearable. But before we get into that, I just wanna say, if you are new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you're not gonna miss the gems I drop on my channel every single week and if you are not new here thank you so much for rocking with your girl you guys are great we are almost at 15,000 subscribers remember when we had like 50 yeah let's not remember that anyway let's get right into today's video let's go okay so let's first start with what is my business so i have a online store and in my online store i sell apparel so i currently sell t-shirts and soon coming there will be crew necks and then hoodies um, and there's different collections that launch all the time. So the original collection that I have is Black Women Can. That is the name of the business. And this idea kind of started with me just wanting to make apparel. I got a Cricut during quarantine and I was like, okay, I'm going to do more with it. And I did not know there was going to be an entire vision for it um i mean that's what happens when you're a child of god and god just drops the vision in your lap and hashtag obedience um so then came out uh, came about black women can and currently there are t-shirts and stickers so that is the main thing that i'll be talking about is um products used for my t-shirt business and for the stickers um stationery shop in there so i'm gonna really kind of dive into the products that i had in the very beginning all the way up until like the things that i have now um and let you know the things that are required when you first start and some of the stuff that I have now I did not need it when I first started it was very possible to get your business running without a lot of these things so I don't want you to feel like oh my god I have to spend all this money on this stuff no you don't now let me say this little disclaimer there because there's gonna be that one person that comes in my comments and we don't need that negative energy here yes there is totally cheaper ways to start a t-shirt business so if you want the cheaper way you can go ahead and click out this video right now and go do some research on what's called drop shipping now, I'm not going to say dropshipping is the easy way out because dropshipping is not easy, but it's a lot easier than what I do. Um, and personally, one thing about Black Women Can and about me, Raven, is everything has to be quality and it has to be the way that I want it. So I wanted to do it myself so that that way I know that I can guarantee quality for every single product and every single item made because it's handmade with love and that's going to be something that will be forever a part of my business even if not if even when it becomes a million dollar company it is going to be handmade i'm not going to ever outsource any of the products um, any of the t-shirt even when this is a million dollar business i will hire enough people who will have to have experience on their resume of using a cricket machine so all of the products will always be like that and again go ahead and click out right now if you want to learn how to do a drop shipping way because that is not this video and i always tell you guys i can't bring you something that i've never tried so i cannot tell you anything about drop shipping being drop shipping because i don't do that so so sorry, not sorry. The beginning steps of actually starting the business, I have a video on my page of how to start a business and it very much applies to this business. The only thing that's probably not mentioned in that video is because I've always had a service-based business, starting a product-based business is very similar, but there's just a couple little details that you will need in addition. So that would be um, a sales tax license or in some states it may be called a reseller's permit. Um, you legally need this to charge sales tax on your items and trust me, you wanna charge sales tax on your item because who's gonna pay that tax? <laughs> so yes, you will need this to legally charge tax on the items that you're selling, any tangible products that you are going to charge for and charge charge taxes on, you do need to have this documentation. So I did have to go and obtain that just like just Google your state and sales tax license or reseller's permit and see what comes up. Um, nine times out of 10, it is required of you, but I can't give specific advice on that because it's different state by state. So check that out. And don't forget to check out that video detailing everything you need, like LLC, EIN, all of that stuff, telling you how to do that for your business. The products that I use to get this business started. Okay, so first of all, it all started with my Cricut Explore Air 2. And then I graduated and got a Cricut Maker. Um, 
and I will say that I started at first with just the Explore Air 2. Um, that was all I had. That's what I was making my stickers with. That's what I was cutting my vinyl with. And it was perfectly fine for me until I experienced the maker and realized how much faster and more efficient it was. I still use my Cricut Explore Air 2 and I actually have a Cricut Maker 3 on the way in the mail. Now, remember, we're doing this ourselves. So if you are gonna do this, the first thing that you do need is a cutting machine. So the one that I did choose to get obviously was the Cricut Explore Air 2. In the beginning, I only had the one machine. Um, I've tried the Silhouette and it's a great tool, it is. However, if I bought it after I already had my Cricut and before I bought my Maker. So if you are already Cricut compatible, trying to do that learning curve of to a new software it's a lot and I didn't have time for that. So I returned it and I got, or actually I sold it on Facebook and I bought the maker. Um, so yes, I had a Cricut and then you're going to need vinyl. I buy my vinyl from Aviva Wholesale or 143 Vinyl. Vinyl is things, they look like this. They usually come in rolls like this. Actually, here's a whole bunch more back here. Um, there's a couple different types of vinyl, but the kind I mainly use is heat transfer vinyl, which is this. That is the design that you see printed on the shirt. Um, you need vinyl to make the designs. Now, you also can go the route of screen print transfers. I personally don't use those. Um, not that I have anything against them. I just haven't looked into buying them yet. But so, or actually, I did once, and I think the reason I didn't do it yet is because the cost um, of buying vinyl versus buying those. It's cheaper to buy vinyl, however, you have to cut these out and do the design yourself. Um, screen print transfers are gonna just come ready to press. So it takes a lot of the labor out of it, but the cost versus the labor, that's kind of gonna have to be what you decide on which one you wanna do. So myself, oh, if, you, if you want to use screen print transfers, you don't need a Cricut machine at all. They're already coming ready to press. The Cricut machine cuts out the vinyl into this design for me and then I take the design and I put it on the shirt and I press it. So with screen print transfers, you literally are gonna order it already made to go and all you have to do is just take it out the box and press it. You don't have to use the Cricut machine to cut it out. Um, I probably will look into this in the future because, only because, the thing with vinyl, if you see pink vinyl here, that's all the design is gonna be. It's gonna be pink. So I have this one pink design here because all I use is pink vinyl. If I want to make something that has multiple colors in it, then I have to get into layering. And layering can be a process and it's not very time efficient. So that's on my dis but my designs are pretty simple. Um, so as of now, this works for me just fine. I have no complaints because my designs are made me one color anyway. Um, but let's say, so I have this design here and this is a sticker actually. Um, and I design all my stickers. I'm gonna talk to you about stickers, but I design all my stickers on Procreate. So I made this sticker. And let's say I wanted to print this onto a shirt. Um, she's not too many, she, she's not too many colors, but if this was like, this is still something that would be a little difficult to layer with just vinyl. So if I wanted to put this on a shirt, I would probably order this in a screen print transfer. It's gonna come looking just like this on a piece of paper, but I would lay it flat onto the shirt. Well, it'd be individual, obviously. I'd lay it flat into the shirt and then put the heat on it and then it would transfer into the shirt. Um, fully colored just like this. So that is a benefit of screen print transfers um, because they take away a lot of the hard work and you can do multiple colors and they're still just as good quality. Personally, I just like vinyl better. Um, the feel of it, it washes just fine um, and it doesn't feel stiff. That's like my only con to screen print transfer is, is they feel just a little stiff, um, paper-like-ish sometimes if they're like a big design but if they're pretty small or if they're just words you really don't notice it but it is something that i just can't do it so yes you're gonna need a cutting machine you're gonna need vinyl or screen print transfers and then you're going to need some form a some form of heat now i first started with a cricut easy press this thing here when i go back and look at what i paid for this versus what i paid for what i have now my heat press versus what I paid now for my heat press, which is that machine over there. 
I would have bought the heat press first. So let me explain. This is a Cricut Easy Press. I don't remember what number, but I have this one and it's like the nine by nine one or so. That plate heats up and you use that to press onto the shirt. Obviously the shirt is not gonna be on your body, but you press the design into the shirt with the heat. It's basically like an oversized iron, but the shape of the plate evenly distributes the heat for a easy press and it leaves less room for errors. So if you use an iron, irons are in that little triangle shape and it may not completely like penetrate the, the design into the shirt and it could be lifting. Um, and I also use a the baby easy press. Um, I use that to brand the colors of my tag of my shirts. So like here, how it says black woman can. Yeah, so for that little space, I use the baby press. Like I said, if I will go back and change it, this easy press, the big nine by nine one is somewhere in the hundreds in the price range. My big heat press that I like industrial press, way bigger plate. It's like double the size of that. I got that off of Amazon for like 200 or a little less. I can't remember, but I, I will put it in here. The price difference of like a few more bucks is worth it because it's a much bigger plate and the pressure is super important when you're pressing a shirt that the vinyl won't like peel and lift. That pressure makes a world of a difference and it heats up a lot hotter and it's very efficient. It's easy one press and done. With the Cricut one, it was a lot of presses. I had to flip the shirt, do it again, still iron it. It was just way much, way too much work for what it was worth. So I highly recommend to go with a big industrial press. If you can afford to just pay the couple extra dollars, probably like gonna be like a $50 difference. Maybe even that. I wanna say the one I have is like 170, honestly, and I used a coupon on it at Michael's. So it, just use your best judgment. I recommend the big one though. They are very good ones on Amazon and I will leave the one that I have. So obviously you're going to need something to press. So you've got your vinyl, you got your cutting machine, you've got your heat press, you're going to need actual shirts. I order my shirts in bulk um, and that is where this uh, reseller's license also comes in handy is because it can exempt you from tax when purchasing things wholesale. So I buy my shirts usually from SNS Activewear. They do require this license, but if you wanna buy them from someone who doesn't, you can buy them from Jiffy Shirts or Aviva Wholesale. Um, I use Bella and Canvas shirts, the 3001. Um, style and the difference between using SNS activewear and Jiffy shirts because a lot of people will say not to use Jiffy shirts. Now if you're not buying a ton of shirts at one time, I recommend Jiffy shirts. Jiffy shirts ships extremely fast. Um, their shirts are gonna be maybe like a dollar or two more than like SNS activewear. Like this brand, Bella and Canvas, I can buy this on SNS activewear for about three dollars and some change per shirt. This shirt on um, Jiffy shirts is probably gonna be around like five dollars, maybe. But the difference is, SNS Activewear does not do free shipping unless you spend two hundred dollars. Not everybody is spending two hundred dollars every time, um, especially considering the shirts are so cheap. Two hundred dollars worth of merchandise at three dollars a shirt is a lot. And if you're a new business, you don't want to overbuy merchandise because what if it doesn't sell? Um, so. Jiffy Shirts gives you free shipping over like $50 orders, SNS is $200 orders. And I've literally watched SNS try and charge me $40 for shipping and my order was at like $130. So I'd rather spend $170 on Jiffy Shirts of actual merchandise at least. So that's kind of up to you. Again, to use your best judgment, which one do you want to use? I typically use both of them. If I know I'm ordering a big order of stuff off of SNS Activewear, I'll use them so I can get a lower price. And I usually will probably spend about $200. But if I'm just needing to replace like an out of stock size, I'm gonna buy it off Jiffy Shirts because it's a really fast shipping and it's free shipping and it's it just balances out. So it's kind of up to you. So here's where my shirts are. I keep them stored in this thing that I got from Target. Um, you can find one of these little cute thingies anywhere, but I have them separated. I have white and black in the OG shirts and then down here are my oversized shirts like um, extra large 3x's 2x's 4x's um, are down here and then like small medium large are up here also just got from target this wire rack i know that uh, these hoodies needed a place to go these crew necks needed somewhere to go the pink tees are here that are also on the website um i am going to use this it's very tall if you can't tell but it is five tiers they have one that's three tiers and one that's narrow and one that's wide 
I want to say this is the wide one. Um, but yes, this is right here in my living room and this stores things beautifully. Yes, so that is my inventory um, right now. I mostly have a lot of black and white shirts because that's what is the biggest seller right now. And then a lot of pink tees um, because that's what's currently selling in October for Breast Cancer um, Awareness Month. And the crew necks are starting to roll in. That is not nearly any of the inventory. The rest I'm still waiting for to get here. Um, I probably place the order for inventory like every week. However, I don't recommend that until you see how well your business is gonna do. Um, but the demand for the products that I have, they sh typically sell very fast, so I just keep them coming in. I guess that's really like all you need for like the shirts. Okay, and then for stickers, um, stickers, honestly, I, okay, and I'll give you this so that you don't make the same mistakes as me. This is not really a t-shirt business thing, but I'm gonna tell you just in case you ever want to. So I design all my stickers, first of all, in my iPad um, in Procreate. There's an app, it's a $10 app, one time, forever, $10, and it's so worth it. And I designed them in here. Um, it's where I made the logo for Black Woman Can. What I use to make stickers is I have, um, I buy this sticker paper off Amazon, and I'll show you the brand. And then I laminate them with these. The Scotch, the Scotch self seal laminate sheets. And then I use this brand of printable vinyl from Amazon. It has 40 sheets for like $13. So I will link that below. A lot of people will say a lot of different brands, but I will like to tell you that this is a Amazon brand that nobody was probably bold enough to test. And I tested it and it's amazing. I love it. Also for the stickers, you're gonna need a good printer. I mentioned a printer in the last video, or not the last video, but the video where I said I was starting a new business, a new side hustle. Don't buy that printer. I really love this printer, the Epson EcoTank. I have the 2760 and I love it because I tried the Inkjet or the Duskjet HP and I went through an entire cartridge of ink in two days, in 48 hours. Um, the good thing about this Epson EcoTank or any printer that's an EcoTank, when you're printing colored stickers, you want something that's gonna give you good color quality and it has sustainable ink. These are my ink levels and they have been, I've had this printer for about two and a half months now, maybe, maybe three months now. And I still have this much ink left. Yeah, I've only used that much in like two and a half months. So that's enough said. You're gonna need a good printer that's gonna give you quality color. It did take some tweaking to figure out the settings that I like. Um, everybody always skips this part in their videos, but for the Epson EcoTank 2760, I use it on um, plain printer paper. I don't select matte, premium, glossy, photo paper, none of that crazy stuff. I literally print it. It gives me the best and closest color quality on plain printer paper setting. And set it to the best quality. And then I turn the brightness to four and saturation to 20. And that's how I get the best. I will, I kid you not, it took a lot of trial and error. I messed that up quite a few times, but that is the best one that I like and it should work for you too, hopefully. Okay, so then I got this thing here, um, this like drawer from the container store. It was $20 and I put all of my stickers in here. So let's try and ignore the uh, dryer behind me. But last thing that I wanted to show is my shipping supplies. So again, the stuff that I started with is not everything that I needed. Um, everything up until this point, the business can afford to buy. So I, you know, got more stuff. But things that were definitely necessary um, are some poly mailer bags. I don't know the full word for this, so people call them poly mailers. That's all I got. Um, I use these pink ones. These are size uh, 12 and a half by 15, something like that. I got these off Amazon. It was a hundred pack for like, I don't remember. I'll put it right here though. Um, I ship shirts and poly mailers because you want to ship in the lightest thing possible. And these add literally nothing to the weight when you are, um, weighing your product to get it ready for shipping and if i ship them in like a box or something that's going to add weight so shirts really i can fit i think marcus has said that you can fit like five shirts in here 
um, in one of these bags. And then I ordered bigger ones because of the crews and the hoodies. Those probably will require bigger bags, but these fit about five shirts. So those are definitely necessary. Something that's not necessary, but I use anyway, are these like cello cellophane bags or whatever. I put each shirt individually in here before it goes in the poly mailer bag because I have a dog and uh, I don't want customers to get, have dog hair on their stuff. So right after the shirt comes like from the shelf to the press, it never touches anything that might have dog hair on it and it goes straight into here when I'm done so that there's not even a chance for it to have lint dog hair or whatever on it. And it also keeps it dry and clean through shipping should something happen. Um, it'll be in this bag and it will stay clean. So these are not necessi necessary, but they're pretty cheap. And um, I think I get a hundred pack of these also for less than $10. So yes, I use those as well. Now, one thing that I will say that I have to get, um, apparently it's, there's like a huge lawsuit about these and you have to have printed on here a disclaimer that if you put it on your head, you could choke and die. Um, so yeah, I don't want anybody to sue me. So I have to get some that say that. You can order them also still very cheap that just happen to have that printed on there. Or you can print it yourself with your Cricut with some um, adhesive vinyl. But that's a lot of work, so I'll probably just buy them already printed on there. Something else that you're gonna need is a shipping scale. I got this one from Amazon, the Accutex scale. Um, this can weigh up to 50 pounds. I'm not shipping anything more than 50 pounds, trust me. Um, and then you just kind of open this up, sit the package here and it weighs it. This is, this one works really good. So I really like this also from Amazon. Highly recommend lip rollers when you have t-shirts. Um, and then a thermal label printer. Now, I'm not gonna link the one I have. I recommend that you get the Dymo one. Mine works very good as well. And I will say I recommend it. Only thing that I don't like is it's only USB. I swear I thought I bought a Bluetooth one. But by the time I opened it to actually start shipping stuff, it was way out of the return period and it's not Bluetooth. So it has to be plugged in and connected to my computer for me to print shipping labels. Extremely frustrating, but it's not a, it doesn't hinder what I do. So would I prefer to have been Bluetooth? Yes, but it's not, so is what it is. Is this printer necessary? No. Recommended? Yes, but you technically can print shipping labels from your printer and just tape them onto the package. Um, but this is easy because it's a label. So it's a thermal printer, doesn't require any ink. Don't ask me how that works. Um, and these labels are like stickers. So you just peel it off, put it on the bag. But if you absolutely need to, um, you can just print it from your printer and tape it on there. Something else that I use for shipping that is not required, but it just helps for a more professional look. Um, I have a care tag that I made on Canva and I print them from my printer on cardstock. So that's the front and then the back has care instructions for the shirt. And then you take a tagging gun, which I got from Amazon for like $13. Punch a hole through there and then you connect to the shirt and it tags it. So love that. A lot of good feedback about this that it makes the stuff look a lot more efficient. And then I just buy cardstock from Michael. You can get like a hundred pack for $5. And um, I can print like nine on one sheet. So print it front and back. Do that yourself. Tagging gun, $13. Comes with a lot of these like plastic thingies, like a thousand pieces of plastic. So yes, last but not least is um, thank you cards. I ordered these, I designed them and ordered them off of um, Canva. Pack of these is like $26 for a hundred. And I usually will put those in an envelope, a little brown envelope that I stamp with our logo. It's called No Issue. And they have the customized logo on there. And I stamp all of our envelopes with that. Yeah, that's like the important stuff. So that's really it, honestly. Uh, I know that was a lot, like 
forever later but yes i hope that helps i hope that helps somebody somewhere some way some shape or form and if i left anything out definitely leave a comment message me on instagram um but make sure you follow us on all of our platforms that have Black Women Can, Black Women Can Facebook, and Black Women Can on TikTok. Um, and make sure you go over to the website and buy you something. And while we're making requests, go ahead and follow me as well, Raven J on Instagram, J with two Y's. And that's all I have for today. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.